In lesson four, we're going to talk about using the mouse. A computer mouse is a peripheral input device that is used to interact with the computer's graphical user interface. The mouse has been a fundamental input device for desktop and laptop computers since its invention back in the 1960s. Yeah, it's been around a while. It is a handheld device that typically consists of a small palm-sized body with one or more buttons and a scrolling wheel. The mouse is placed on a flat surface and its movement controls the movement of a pointer on the computer screen. When the user moves the mouse, the pointer follows the same direction and speed, allowing precise pointing and clicking on icons, buttons, and other elements. Holding your mouse. Properly holding a mouse is important to ensure comfortable and efficient use, especially during extended periods of computer work or gaming. Um, holding your mouse is as important as holding your chopsticks right. Right. If, you, if you're going to use the mouse right, you got to hold it. You got to grip it right. I like to hold the mouse with a relaxed and natural grip. Avoid gripping the mouse too tightly as this can lead to hand fatigue and discomfort. Allow your fingers to rest gently on the buttons and the scroll wheel. And yes, that is actually a picture of my hand on a mouse circa 2002. <laughs> now, there are two kinds of grips. There's the fingertip grip or the palm grip. I'm a fingertip guy. Choose the grip style that feels most comfortable for you. With the fingertip grip, only the fingertips touch the mouse buttons and the palm hovers above the mouse. This grip provides precise control and is well suited for small, lightweight mice. I like to put my thumb on the left side of the mouse, my index finger on the left mouse button, my ring finger on the right side of the mouse. And then your middle finger can go over the right mouse button, just like that little illustration shows right there. But of course, everyone's grip is different. With the palm grip, the entire hand rests on the mouse and the palm makes contact with the back of the mouse. This is better for larger ergonomic mice and provides more support for the hand. I personally don't like doing that. My palm never touches the mouse, but that's just me. Make sure you keep your wrist in a neutral position. Avoid excessive bending or angling of the wrist up or down. This can lead to wrist strain and discomfort. Put your wrist in a natural straight alignment with your forearm. Many people, including myself, like to use a wrist rest. Try saying that 10, 10 times fast. Wrist rest, wrist rest, wrist rest, wrist rest. Okay. Or purchase a mouse pad that has an integrated wrist rest. I got like a little gel one for mine. Trust me, I speak from experience. You don't want to get carpal tunnel from improper use of a mouse. I've been there. I used to finish working on a computer all day and then I'd go play video games with my kids. And so I'd spend I don't know, 20 hours a day using a mouse and I, my, my, my wrist was starting to hurt by the end of a couple of days of doing that. I also personally like to take a towel, just a regular bathroom towel, and I fold it up and put it under my forearm. So I've got the wrist rest and then I got a towel behind that. So that's just for, for comfort. Now, as far as arm movement goes, I've read some experts recommend you use your arm and shoulder to move the mouse rather than just your wrist. I don't do this. They say it reduces strain on the wrist and helps to prevent, you know, the repetitive motion injuries. I, I've never done that myself. I just rest my forearm on my towel. I put my wrist on my wrist rest and I just use my wrist to move back and forth. That's all. But again, work with whatever works best for you. Now, we're going to talk about Pointer versus cursor, and this is something that I've actually gotten in arguments with people over before. So I'm gonna, I will die on this hill, okay? The mouse pointer is often incorrectly referred to as the cursor. No, this is the pointer. It is a graphical icon displayed on the computer screen that indicates the position where actions such as clicking or selecting will occur while using the mouse. This guy right here, moving around right now, this little guy, that's the mouse pointer, okay? And it may change depending on what you move over. See that, how it changes sometimes? Okay, see? Goes from an eye to a little four-way arrow, back to an arrow, see? It serves as a visual guide to help users interact with the computer. And a mouse pointer is usually a small arrow-shaped icon, but its appearance can vary depending on the context and the operating system. Older versions of Windows had this really grainy looking guy. Newer ones look more like that. This is, see, that's the Windows 11 mouse pointer. And there's alternate themes. You can use a dark theme to get a dark one like that. In some cases, the mouse pointer may change to a hand icon. 
when hovering over a clickable link, such as a hyperlink in a web browser. Or sometimes the pointer might change to a spinning circle or an hourglass when the computer is processing a task, making you wait. Again, waiting, always waiting. Oh, I hate waiting for the computer. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that the pointer is often incorrectly referred to as the cursor. The terms pointer and cursor are often used interchangeably and their meanings can vary slightly depending on the operating system and software being used. However, there is a slight, subtle difference between the two. The pointer is a term that refers to the icon the user can control and move on the computer screen using a pointing device like a mouse, trackpad, touchscreen, whatever. The cursor represents the active insertion point in a document which shows the location where text will be inserted when the user starts typing. The cursor is often a blinking vertical line or a vertical bar that appears within a text field, word processor, or any other application where text input is possible. It shows the user where the next character or text will be added or edited. For example, back to my WordPad document, okay? This is the mouse pointer. That blinking line at the end of the document right up here, right up here, that says Star Trek fans, see where it's blinking? That oh, it was blinking, blink. Sometimes if the, if the application loses the focus, if you click on something else, it stops blinking. But that's the cursor or the insertion point. So if I start typing now, that's where the text goes, at the cursor or the insertion point. This is not the cursor, this is the pointer. And you can point and click to move the cursor. See, point, click. It's one of my pet peeves when people use pointer and cursor when they shouldn't use, they should be the other one. Mm. <laughs> All right, so to point with a mouse refers to the action of moving the mouse to position the mouse pointer on a specific location or item on the screen. When you point with the mouse, you are using it to direct the pointer to a particular element on the screen. This doesn't include clicking. You just move the pointer. So for example, right now I'm just moving the mouse and I'm pointing at that B there, which says bold. I didn't click on it, I just moved the mouse pointer. That's called pointing. If I tell you to point at the find button, you come right up here and just point at it. Just sit right there, okay? Now clicking means to press one of the buttons on the mouse, usually the left button. If I say just to click on something, that is to click the left button. So you move the mouse, you get the mouse pointer positioned over a specific item, and to click the mouse, it sends a signal to the computer indicating you wanted to do something because you pointed at it and clicked on it. Clicking the mouse is used to select, activate, and interact with various elements such as icons, buttons, links, text fields, and more. Now in my classes, I'll always refer to clicking as meaning the left button. If I want you to click a different button like the right button, I'll say to right click. Okay, and clicking means to press the button down for a brief moment and then release it. Don't hold the button down and don't click on it multiple times. So again, if I come in here and I click on that B, I've now turned bold on. Now new text I type is in bold, see that? And I can click again to turn it off. Back to normal, see that? Here's a different WordPad document. I have my signature inserted into the document as a picture. If I hover my mouse over it and click on it, the picture gets selected. And then once it's selected, I can perform other actions on it, such as moving it or deleting it. Right, here's that document. I can move over that image, click, and now I've selected that item. I can then press delete on my keyboard to delete it, and it's gone. Right-clicking involves pressing the right mouse button while the mouse pointer is positioned over an item. Right-clicking typically opens a menu or provides a list of options relevant to whatever you've clicked on. For example, if I right-click on that image, it opens up a menu where it offers me options to cut, copy, paste, and do other stuff. And here it is. If I right-click on that guy, there's that menu, see? Now, this one gets a lot of beginner users, the double-click. All right, double clicking involves pressing the left mouse button twice in rapid succession. You can't do it too fast or too slow. 
Finding the right rhythm sometimes takes a little while to master. When I used to teach this class in the actual classroom, getting the double click was something that took a lot of practice for some people who've never used computers before. In my WordPad document, if I double click a word, it selects that entire word, and then you can do stuff to that word. For example, I can then bold the word by clicking on the bold icon. Here's my document again. If I double click on the word captain, it selects that word. See, I can then click on bold and it bolds that. I can double click on resolutions and underline it. See? But a lot of people have trouble. They either go too fast. See, I can't even do it wrong anymore. Or you go too slow. All right, I'm going click, click. That's not fast enough. But if you go too fast, sometimes you end up dragging, which you don't want to do. You can't move the mouse at all while you're double clicking. It's got to stay perfectly still. So this might take some practice, right? Double click, double click. Once you do it for a while, you get the hang of it. Click and drag. To click and drag means to press and hold down the left mouse button, then move the mouse. This action is typically used to move an object on the screen. For example, in my WordPad document, I can click and drag the image of my signature and then move it to a different location. Here's my Word document again. I can click once to select my signature, right? That's an image. I can then click and drag by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse. And see that cursor moving? Wherever I let the button go, that's where it drops it. See that? Click, drag, and drop, just like that. And yes, if this is new to you, this will take some practice. You can also do it with words. I can come in here and select Wednesday by double clicking on it and then click and drag and move the word Wednesday. See that? Click and drag. You can also click and drag to select a large block of text. So far I just showed you double clicking to select a word. But if you want to select the whole line of text, you can click, start here, click, drag across, and that selects the whole line. And then you can Underline that if you want to, All right? Or click and drag down to get multiple lines. You can also come over here in the margin, click and drag. And now all that text is selected. And again, I cover this in a lot more detail in my Windows classes and in my Microsoft Word class. Now, some mice might have a scroll wheel, which is a little wheel positioned between the left and right buttons. You can use this to move up and down a document, a web page, or something like that. Here I am in my web browser. This is my website. And if I use my mouse, I can use the scroll wheel on it to scroll down. See that? And it's scrolling down the page. All right, scroll back up. I can also use the page down and page up keys on my keyboard like we learned about in the last lesson. See that? I can also move over some text here to get a hyperlink. See that? I can click on it and load up that page then. And then to close my browser, I click on this little button up here with the mouse. And we'll talk about all these different things in the Windows classes. Now, some fancy mice might have more than two buttons. You could have a middle button. You could have a back button for your thumb on the left. That's especially useful on the web because you can then hit that instead of clicking on the back button in your browser. Some gaming mice will have all kinds of buttons over them to control the sensitivity of the mouse and you can use them to point and shoot and aim in your game, all kinds of things. Most mice don't have all these buttons, but some do. So if you bought a super cool, expensive, crazy gaming mouse, well, read the documentation that came with it. <laughs> Most mice today will have a left button, a right button, and a scroll wheel. Now, you might not have a mouse. You might have some other kind of a pointing device. For example, the trackball. Back in the day when I was trying to get rid of my carpal tunnel, I actually bought a couple different trackballs to try. And a trackball is basically an upside-down mouse. Instead of a ball on the bottom, it's got a ball on the top. If you're old like me, you might remember the video arcade game Centipede. It had a big ball in the middle and you move that around and you had to shoot the bugs coming down at you. Well, that's what this was. That was called a trackball. And nowadays, most laptops come equipped with something called a touchpad. It's a rectangular area that you slide your finger across and that moves the mouse pointer. 
Some touchpads have actual physical left and right buttons that you can click that simulate the left and right mouse clicks, or you just tap the corner of it and without actually having a button there, that will tap the mouse buttons. And this specific feature depends entirely on what kind of laptop you have. And finally, a lot of modern computers don't even require pointing devices like a mouse or a track point because you simply tap on the screen with your finger. These are known as touchscreen devices and they're common in smartphones, tablets, and even PCs with touchscreen capabilities. All you need is your finger to control what happens on the device.